today we're going to give Milo his first ride. Uh, but before we ever even think of a ride, these are some of the minimum requirements uh, to prepare the horse for a safe and successful ride and a successful future. He needs to build trust and generally not be afraid of objects that move, make a noise, look weird. And whatever mother nature tells him that is dangerous, he needs to trust the human enough uh, and the leadership of the human to um, just go against his nature and follow our lead. Uh, things falling behind him, obviously, uh, shouldn't be a problem. He needs to not be scared of the saddle, be able to disengage his hindquarters, uh, give to pressure, and um, just uh, be kind of chilled and not worried about things. He needs to give to imply pressure and direct pressure. He needs to know how to lunge uh, and be relaxed about wearing that saddle. And obviously he needs to know how to round pen and do some things at liberty, come into the circle, um, maintain a gait. Uh, this is his lunging, obviously on a rope, not at liberty. He needs to walk trot canner with the saddle without offering to buck. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good yeah, baby. It's a good boy. Yeah. Flex, which is the most important thing. Um, not obviously not being worried about people jumping upwards. Um, flexing would be the break and the safety, you know, kind of the handbrake, safety for him, safety for the rider. Uh, a dummy, we use a dummy because he's a pony and the dummy is scary enough to where if he's not scared of the dummy, all he needs to do for the next ride is just carry the human. And of course, he needs to read my body language and, um, you know, choose at liberty to stay with me. As you can see, he's not tied to the rope, but uh, he's allowing me to tighten up cinches and uh, the dummy rider and so forth. Uh, you might see in this video uh, some things that might be bothersome to some people, just like when I'm teaching him to flex. Uh, and turn hindquarters and forequarters, but keep in mind that we're adding value to this horse's future. No one wants to get rid of a horse who is safe and performs well. And as a trainer, I can't keep all the horses I train and I rescue. So this is an amazing value to his life. And um, I am only getting on him for um, his education. I'm a hundred pounds and he's a pony so uh, I don't ride him on a regular basis but just for his education purposes and just overall the horse needs to want to be with you and stay with you and feel rewarded and great about himself and around humans and now we begin Milo is a two-year-old gelding he was previously wild when I first got him at six months old along with his mom. And I have a separate video that addresses the gentling process. So today is going to be uh, Milo's first human ride at Walk, Trot and Canner. Liberty round panning and what body language and what words mean what like you know sending him out at the walk and the trot in the canner and then bringing him in or turning him switching direction um, so I'm gonna have her come in here and okay, he uh, kind of try to talk to him about that, those kind of stuff for a moment and then we'll continue.
So she's trying to stay behind his drive line, use her left hand to point, to give him the direction that she wants him to go. And then she is uh, creating energy behind him to move him out. And he needs to be a lot more responsive than this. And this is exactly why we're doing that. Now he wants to stop here because that's why I am. Walk. So what we're looking for is a consistent, um, consistent gate and and like a circle, a whole circle in one gate. That's what you're looking for, Diana. Okay. One circle, at Frog. least, of consistency without stopping. So catch him maybe earlier. So this is sometimes a problem that happens, but it's a good problem. You know, they get so unworried and desensitized about plastic bags that they don't quite move off of them. But, um, you know, it, it just, we have to adjust our energy level to let them understand that we're serious about what we're asking. And then with youngsters like this, too much energy is too much and too little energy is too little. So this is where people need to practice and assess and, and just get a feel for, um, how much energy and and get the timing right as to when to encourage forward movement and when to stop and these things only come with watching people do it and then practicing doing it and uh, it's kind of a trial and error um, you can have a person who's more expertly on the side and tell you okay now increase the energy or lower your energy breathe you know, uh, if, if you have someone like that to mentor you through it or see from the sidelines what needs to happen, that's a good thing. But uh, just watching other people and, and their timing when it's right is worth um, doing because it, it just helps you learn. Okay. You want another apple supply? Okay. So the reason, again, why we're doing apples is because... He's a young horse, we don't want to burn him out. We want to make it um, a game. So he should never dread coming into this round pen. He should be respectful and, and work because we asked him to, but he also should get a fun experience and something he's looking forward to doing. And also his stress levels need to be maintained at uh, a level appropriate and we uh, we like to to present options to the horses to have um, just fun and not be stressed out there is another part that I talk about that you stress your horse out on purpose because you really need to know what they're gonna do under stress and they need to be able to manage their stress but then they always need to calm down and still have a good experience and maybe build confidence from it.
So this is a pass. An A would be him just being really willing and relaxed and, and just going and going and going and going until he's, you know, we tell him not to. But um, we're going to let this be for now. And we're going to move on to the next um, exercise to get him prepared for riding. Oh, never mind that moment. I'm purposely being super sloppy. This is not how you put your reins on. I just want to do anything really weird and bizarre. So then for him, it's not really weird and bizarre. And then, you know, people, when people move appropriately around him, it will be a great deal for him. So here I wanna make sure that he understands flexing again, because this is gonna save us or any rider on him. And I asked him without a treat, he understands he's licking and chewing, which means he under, he's thinking about it. Now I want to give him an apple to even further encourage this. And now here, I'm going to ask without an apple, just for him to do it. Good boy. Let's move him a little bit so he can see better. He's not as light, you know, as I would love him to be. See here, he has a little bit of resistance. Okay, good boy. I'm gonna ask one more time without the apple. So it is super important to release right when the horse um, creates his own slack. So when I pull up, I have my hand steady and it's his job to bring his head. See, I didn't release this time. Now I'm going to release. So it's, it, it's his job to bring his nose all the way to his girth area right here. It's my job to keep steady and be fair and release as soon as he creates slack. So I hold here, he, re uh, he releases, I release. Good boy. Okay, uh, now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, pull his head 45 degrees. So he has a little bit of flex. You pull his nose 45 degrees, you see right here? And you hitch that into there, like so. You do your little knots here. And this is gonna have some give, so I may have to adjust it, readjust it. You don't do, do it fully to the side the first time you try to do 45 degrees but because this has a give and it will probably slide through as he pulls that's why we're leaving it with his head bent so much maybe you can let him adjust for a minute here see what he'll do he's flexing which is so cute good boy i'm gonna reward this yeah. To get the edge off of him he's gonna fight with it realize that he shouldn't be fighting it's not gonna give and now we're gonna move his hindquarters move your hindquarters we're gonna teach him that he can move with this good and then four in four front in good back in Front end, back end, front end, and leave him alone. Good boy. So, the problem with the <coughs> plastic bag, he, he, he's so desensitized to it that he's not sure if he should stand or move. So then it's up to my body language. So for example, if I stand like this, 
and I just do this my body is not really asking for anything but if I go and I hunt his hindquarters like this that means move good boy Now he's finding his own release there. Good boy. I'm going to let him rest a little more. Give him a treat. You don't have to give treats. The horse needs to work because you said so. I like to work this way in certain scenarios. It encourages them licking and chewing, which then releases endorphins and gets them off the reactiveness into their thinking. So see how he's creating his own slack now, his own release. I'm sure this is not the most comfortable position for him, but he needs to realize that his body can stretch this way, his body can move this way. He knows it at liberty when he wants to scratch himself and things, but but it's somebody is applying pressure and he's asking and he shouldn't be fighting against it because then people and him will get in a wreck if he fights against it he needs to learn to respect the pressure and give to it this is why we're doing this good boy i'm going to move him one last time and then i'm going to switch directions and do it on the other side So some horses would put a lot more fight about this ordeal here. Uh, and those are the ones that, <clears throat> you know, unless you test, you don't know what a horse is going to do. So it's better to test and see before you're in the saddle than if you're already, if you're already in the saddle and you realize you, you got no brakes. And, you know, the horse gets hurt, you get hurt. He now learned that booking gets people off, so he should try it again, that kind of stuff. And, and uh, you know, most kids, unless they're, they started riding early and they have good m mentorship and stuff, they, they wouldn't know what to do with this. They wouldn't know how to stop a bucking horse. Uh, so we want to make sure that we do the best by the horse and the people who are going to ride him in the future because you add value to this horse's life uh, nobody wants to get rid of a good horse maybe some people due to other circumstances but generally speaking if a horse bucks somebody off then they want to sell him and then the, the horse you know you don't know what future he's gonna have it's the trainer's job to make sure that the horse is exposed to all kinds of things. The horse can understand and do all kinds of tasks. You know, he still has 
some slack, but he's not gonna pull his head straight. And I'm giving him a moment to kind of work with this on his own for a minute. See, you don't want this to happen under saddle. But they all need to do their own inspection. They need to, to see who gives what doesn't, you know, obviously he wants to straighten his head and he needs to hit that uh, wall and decide that the easiest answer is to just give his head instead of pulling on it. Pulling is not, doesn't feel the best. Good boy. Good boy. He's licking and chewing. This is really good. I'm gonna try to encourage that. Go ahead. Bring his anxiety down a little bit. I'll give him another moment to think. See, every time he pulls it, that doesn't feel so good. He decides to give which is the right answer. So, uh, you know, this is an introduction to a concept. It takes time for the horse uh, to be habitual about something they just learned. Um, but at least he understands what, that we don't pull against it. It's better to give. Okay, I'm gonna ask him to move his hindquarters. Good, good. Move his forequarters. So he's confused on this side. So I'm gonna try to move him off. So we don't have an accident on the fence. Come on. I'm gonna try to, if something doesn't work, then I want him to understand it. I'm gonna try a different way. Good, and I may help him. Good boy. Good boy. Because I don't necessarily want him to run from the from the bag, I just want him to understand you need to move your shoulder. Move your shoulder. Good. Go back. Good. 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 Then unlock your butt. Good boy. Good boy. Move your shoulder. Good boy. Unlock your butt. Unlock your butt. Good boy, good boy. I'm gonna let him think about this for a minute. Oh, look at that, he's discovering he can even walk forward with his nose tip to the inside. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, baby. Good boy. Good boy. I'll let him chew on that for a moment. Good boy. See if he can understand to move himself off the fence. Good. Good. Good boy. Move your shoulder. Good boy. Good. And move your butt. Good boy. That was it. One more time. I'll move him off the fence. Good. We'll move his shoulder. answer if he if they don't understand you just try a different way you're not stuck to one way or the other the 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 biggest point is for the horse to understand 
And for this to be not a terrible experience, for this to be an appropriate experience. So the appropriate thing is, yes, he's gonna struggle, and yes, he's gonna learn. That's the appropriate experience. I have never seen a horse that doesn't struggle somewhat with this. And yet it's such an important part of their education. Um, and then if they really, really struggle, then you know there was a big hole there to fix in the first place. So that's, that needed to happen regardless. The final step yeah. before um, we ride ride is a, a pony ride to just make sure he understands my weight. He's never felt my weight in the saddle. So we're going, again, you wanna make sure he's not gonna react on either side. So you check with your little jumps and he gives you the green light. You always wanna have the nose of the horse tip towards you just a little. And jump, jump, get halfway on. I know I'm too big. I'm not planning to ride this horse for his lifetime. It's just starting him so a kid can enjoy him. Good boy. All right, let's go somewhere. Just using a halter right now. We will transition him to the bit later. For his first one, you don't use a bit. All right, good boy. And I'm gonna try to show him pull and tip his nose, give him the apple. Worried a little bit about touching and there we go. You want to wiggle in that saddle? It's now I love what he just did. When I started wiggling in the saddle, he stopped, which means most likely if somebody loses their balance in the future when he's sure of himself, he will stop. This is a really, really good thing. Okay, I think. Uh, one more circle and then let's try. Do you want to try? Oh yeah, that would be nice. Okay, so Tiana had a great suggestion to let him feel my weight at the trot. All right. Come on, Milo.
gonna be a big uh, part of this um, success or failure because she's got to control her energy about how much she asks of him and how little she asks of him. Uh, we're not looking for perfection, we're looking for a pass. If you walk struts and canners, that's a pass. Um, the reason why I'm allowed to pull back on the reins just a little to stop him is because we've been driving him already, so he kind of understands what this pressure means from driving. Uh, but yeah, let's see how this goes. The worst thing that I could do riding him for the first time is um, if he surges that I pull back on him really hard, you need to have one hand to pull him to the side. In fact, I'm going to try this. There we go. This is good. I'm going to give him his apple for this. So you pull to the side, you don't pull back. Because on a young horse that is cantering for the first time with weight, what happens is you, the person is asking them to go forward, then you're putting the brakes and they got pressure from both ends and what happens in the middle is a hump and then they start bucking because they scared themselves. So as much as somebody could be scared you know, you have to just have confidence. Hold, hold the horn with one hand. Your safety lies in, in the inside rein because you can pull their head around and disengage their hindquarters. This is exactly why we did the previous exercise that we did before we started. And that's it. All right, let's see how this goes. Walk. I can help giving him signals, but my big is to be a passenger. pressure him to go um, to extend the truck. finish him off in a good way. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try turning. Pressure, pressure, up. 
Maybe not tomorrow because it's Sunday. So I'm gonna ask for this. Good boy. I'm gonna rearrange myself here. You don't want your, your feet to be way in the stirrups for this, okay? Because a little horse like this can drag. You want your the ball of your feet in the stirrups. And you want to kind of put a little bit of pressure on those stirrups so they don't flop around. Um, and, and then you lose your footing. Your foot gets too much on the inside and then you lose your, your foot in the stirrup. I don't know if I said this right. All right, good boy. Let him trot. Trot, Milo. Now, when you get off, you don't want to be sneaky about it. I mean, he's seen me up on top so many times because I've been laying on him doing the Jeffries method. He's been driving. He's a prepared pony, okay? But either way, you know, you don't assume anything. You just warn him you're coming. You rock back and forth. You tip his nose towards you. And then when you get off, you know, you do it rather quickly. Don't hang in the saddle there. Good boy. That was amazing. Mm. Yes. Good job, Miles. Good boy. Good boy, baby. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was so stressful. I know. That was so stressful. Well, this is one horse that came from an auction, but he won't be going back either going to be a good kid's pony or a good grandma or ma or dad. We're not discriminating. Uh, <laughs> or big brother, sister, driving pony or both. He actually can now do both. He can drive and he can ride. So fun for the whole family, multi-generational family. What a good boy. I love you. Oh.